everybody, and welcome to our first session of Microeconomics for Public Policy. This is super exciting. I'm really excited to be with you for this, uh, for this next semester. Um, this is one of my favorite classes to teach. Um, oddly enough, um, I actually hated this class when I took it when I went through my MPA program um, a few years ago. It was the most difficult concept to wrap my head around. I hated the idea of supply and demand and economics, and all of these models didn't make sense at all. Um, and then um, I ended up getting a PhD in public policy, not realizing that half of that degree would be this economic stuff. And so I again had to confront it um, and muddled my way through and made it. Um, and then at my very first teaching job, um, the course they assigned me to teach was this. And so my general philosophy for this class is to make it as easy and accessible for you as possible, um, in part because I want to um, kind of redeem the past versions of me that went through more difficult versions of this class. Um, I want this to be fun. I want this to be um, intuitive um, and as easy to understand as economics can be. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to try to do for this whole semester here. Um, if we were meeting in person, each class session would have some sort of activity that was hands-on, some sort of simulation that we could do to help solidify these economic concepts. Unfortunately, since we're meeting online, we don't have that possibility, um, especially because we're meeting asynchronously. We can't all coordinate and meet online at some specific time to conduct some sort of experiment or simulation. Um, and so we'll miss out on some of that, unfortunately. Um, but we should be able to still get um, lots of the intuition behind economics and um, you should hopefully not be too afraid. Um, in your welcome surveys that you've filled out before you started this class, um, in the emails that I sent out, um, lots of you show some um, hesitation and trepidation about this class. And that's totally fine. Um, that was me. Um, I was in the, your same boat back in 2010 when I started my MPA program. I had never taken an econ class. Um, and it was like the hardest class ever and I hated it, like I said. But um, my goal is to make it so that you can leave your hesitation and your fear and your anxiety behind because this should be um, fun and exciting. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you're following along with the slides online um, on the course website, you can download those as a PDF and follow along. Um, if not, you can just watch the slides here. Um, you can watch these at double speed, at three, at triple speed if YouTube lets you do that. Um, feel free to do that. Skip ahead, go back and watch other things. Um, these slides are here for your benefit um, to help kind of point out the main concepts that you should have found in the readings and um, kind of explain some of the more tricky parts and the more important parts that um, you should be learning. So the plan for today, let's switch over to the slides here. Um, the plan for today is we're going to be talking about the broader idea of capitalism and how that matters for public policy. And then we'll give you some um, concrete tools that you can use for some basic economic analysis. So even on your first day, you're gonna be doing some fun stuff in Excel to adjust for inflation um, and convert prices from um, old numbers to modern numbers. And it should be um, fun and hopefully fairly intuitive. Um, so the plan for today is we'll go through a few different topics. Each of these are gonna be separate videos. Um, so this is not gonna be like a big long, hour-long um, video here. You can look at it in different chunks. Um, first, we're going to talk about this idea of technology growth and capitalism and how capitalism has fueled um, this massive growth, growth in technology over the past um, century or so. Um, then we'll talk about one of the core principles of this class, which is unique because most economics classes don't talk about this idea of institutions. Um, part of the reason we focus so much on this in this class is because I'm more trained as a political scientist um, and I care more about like politics and institutions and um, systems and structures than um, individual supply and demand curves and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but it's also very, very important for public sector focused economics, this, this notion of institutions. So we'll spend a lot of the semester focused on institutions and how you as an MPA or an MPP student um, can work within institutions to improve them, um, reform them, and kind of hopefully create a better society. Um, then we'll talk briefly about why you have to take this class in an MPA or an MPP program. It's generally pretty much in any public administration or public policy program, you are required to take some sort of economics class. Um, so we'll talk about why that is and why it's important to do this. We'll briefly go over some of the class details. 
um, about how readings work and how like what the textbooks are, how you should um, process all of the readings, how you should read them. Um, I'll give you some strategies for the best ways to read kind of longer articles. Um, then we'll briefly come back to this idea of institutions um, and why they're so important and kind of connect that back to why we make you take this class um, and why it's important for public sector focused um, employees and um, people who care about um, improving the public sector to care about institutions and the economics of institutions. Then we'll talk about some of the downsides of capitalism. The first half of the of the of the lecture here about technology growth and capitalism, that's all like rah rah capitalism, yay, it's great. Um, but capitalism is not without its negative consequences. Um, it leaves people behind. Um, it causes all sorts of inequality. It destroys the environment. Other major issues that um, are kind of the side effects of this capitalist growth. So we'll talk about that in this section here, and then we'll conclude. Um, with a demonstration of how to measure things and why we measure things um, in the economy um, and what the economy even is. Um, you listen to a couple of podcasts about this um, from On the Media and Planet Money about what is this economy thing that we're trying to talk about. Um, and then we'll be able to measure it and measure things like inflation and other things in Excel. So let's go ahead and get started with our first section.